Yeah, Bruce, just wondered if you could talk a little bit about uh, UNLV and what, uh, now that you maybe had a little time to look at them, what, uh, what challenges they present and what, what maybe you can gain from a game like this. Well, they definitely can score the basketball. There's no doubt about that. Uh, you know, they've had troubles, a uh, little bit of trouble stopping people. Uh, you know, if you, you can't, you know, you, if you get grilled, they got two explosive scores in, uh, in Bryce and, and Caleb Grill. And, uh, you know, we just, we're going to have to do a good job on them uh, to limit, you know, that, what their production. And, you know, you got to find Grill. Um, you know, they kind of play small ball and he's, he's kind of their four. So they put you in little that binds with that, with some, because he's a guard, but he's a, he's, you know, playing that four. So you got a little bit of mix ups with who's guard and who, um, and then, and then obviously Bryce can really create and make plays and, uh, you know, do a good, good job of helping and making him kick. And that that's easier said than done. Uh, hopefully, you know, have a little bit of advantage inside. Um, and, and you know, again, we're developing our depth, but I, I hope that can be a factor also in the game. And uh, you saw Grill last year with Iowa State, plus I believe you were recruiting him at one point. Is he, is he a different player now than last year, just the way they're using him or? Well, like I said, they, they had him playing the, you know, kind of playing the four, uh, you know, they just, they're small. And, you know, they – so you get a little bit of – and he took advantage of it against Alabama. They got – Alabama lost him several times. Uh, he got – he really got hot, obviously, from three. He's a really good three-point shooter. Um, you know, so he, he – you know, he – it allows him to roam a little bit more, get some freedom. We're going to have to do a good job of switching and staying – in, in matchups that uh, we we can contest shots and not let them get going. Uh, you know, he's he's a better athlete than, than I think people understand. He, he, I think four, uh, four sports star and coming up and he's got a little bit of bounce to him and, uh, you know, a year older, uh, you know, freshman last year had had some, a couple nice moments. But now you, you've been through college basketball, and, and it looks like he's taking a nice step. Thanks. Next question to Jackson Snyder. Yeah, Coach, I just wanted maybe your thoughts on, on now that you've had a chance to kind of sit on Monday night and what you've learned after looking back at that and then what you've been able to kind of talk about with your team uh, coming off of that first win. Well, I think the big thing is now can we do the little things, the execution things, and not have the mistakes and breakdowns where you can, you know, we had the lead to, you know, 17 in the first half, back to 15 in the second half. And and now, you know, two, three possessions of, of really playing good, solid basketball can you break team spirit, but we never broke their spirit. Um, obviously, turnovers is, is a big factor. Uh, you know, I, you know, we got to take care of the basketball. We, you know, if we can cut off, you know, five, seven turnovers and, and then cut off, uh, you know, another five or seven tough shots early in the shot clock and, and then finish some of those fast break opportunities or make better decisions on the fast break opportunities. You know, those, those are things that could, you know, you, you get another whatever 15 shots in the game because of those. And, and, you know, we've shot the ball pretty well. So, so far, you were six for 13 that game from three. Um, our field goal percentages are not, you know, probably not the, the biggest negative we have. It's probably just more the turnovers, decision-making, those type of things. So I think that's the, the next step. Uh, we, again, you know, we hadn't had this, we didn't have the time to practice because we didn't have the, uh, to put ourselves in different situations with 10 guys. But yesterday we gave each team a seven point lead with eight minutes left in the game. And they had to extend that lead to win the game, um, you know, over the next four minutes, uh, just, we got to, And then we got to, you know, obviously, uh, you know, as we move forward end of game situations, type, things like that, shot clock situation, those are things that, you know, we didn't get the practice but hopefully we'll be able to practice over this next uh, 
in a week or 10 days before we get, get into a conference. And then just uh, like looking forward, having fans now on Saturday, even though it's only 15%, does that maybe provide even more of a little bit of an advantage? Like you've already been able to have a few home games, be comfortable. UNLV has been on the road, but now you add even a little bit of fans. Does that give you even more of an advantage to get some fans in there? Well, there's no doubt we, we, you know, it always helps. I think the, the second half of games, uh, that's where the fans become a factor. And, and when you play with no fans, uh, you know, there's, you know, you can say you're playing at home, but it, it, I'm not sure it really has that much of, of a factor. I, I, I think you see it. I, I, to me, I watch it in the NFL, uh, that home court, that home field advantage, the, the pass rush guys that get the energy and, uh, those type of things. So, so the fans are going to help. Obviously, we I'd still at the same time, I can't overemphasize to our fans, you know, please stay social distance. Please stay with, you know, keep the masks on. Um, we want to do the right thing. We don't want to create a spread. And uh, we want them there, but we want them to stay safe. And, uh, and we don't want to, to be honest, we don't want the county to shut us down. So hopefully everyone can, uh, you know, listen and and do what they're asked to do and we keep the fans in the stands and it, it'll help it'll help them for a little you know relief mental health just being there seeing a game enjoying himself letting out some of their uh energy and and then it'll help our team get a little bit of energy uh as we move forward and when we talked to casey just a little bit ago he kind of talked about how he feels like uh, at, going into the first game, he, he didn't feel like the team was fully gelled, but he certainly feels like there's been some progress in that after the last couple of games. And finally, kind of finding out roles a little bit more and kind of figuring out what it takes to win as a team. Have you seen that development? Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt. And that just comes through time and experience and playing. And, uh, you know, that's why the more games we can get, the, the better it is. Obviously, I want to win games but I also want them to get experience. And that's, 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 you know, I, I wish we would have had a couple easy ones to get, you know, Selton Miguel, uh, you know, more minutes and uh, Rudy Williams more minutes. And now you got Carlton coming back and actually got practice for the full, you know, for most of the practice yesterday, um, you know, but we don't have that advantage. So Every minute, every game, every practice, uh, I hope we can take advantage of, and it's going to help us develop as a team. And you mentioned Carlton there. Uh, did it look like he might be able to play on Saturday? I don't know about that, but he got involved in practice. I, I mean, this is a young man that didn't really do any basketball for three months. Um, and, and now the last two weeks, you know, started with individual workouts, uh, Got a little bit into non-contact, and then yesterday was the first day of any contact. Uh, you know, so it's 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 it was good for him. Uh, give him a little, you know, uh, you know, a little bit of excitement. Feel part of it, uh, and 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 it, and it's good for our team too. Uh, you know, just to have another body there, uh, and and we were able to go four on four on four yesterday, which we we haven't been able to do since. Uh, I think since August. So it's, uh, you know, those kind of drills, the drills that you do all the time uh, to help your team gain toughness and gain uh, competitive spirit and camaraderie, all those things we haven't been able to do. So now with him back um, and some of the other guys, it, it definitely helps. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Yep. Uh, next question to Arnie Green. Yeah, I wanted to ask you a little bit about Casey. Uh, I know he hit free throws, in, especially in that last game. And how, how big is that when you've got a, a post player you can maybe go inside to and you can trust him to, to hit free throws down the stretch? Well, you know, we, it, it's, it's really important. And something we've, it's been one of my first focuses from the start of the year. Uh, one, to get the ball inside. Uh, and I think Davion, you know, uh, as he – gains confidence is he gains strength uh, uh, mobility and you know balance those type of things that big guys have to develop I think we're gonna be able to go inside the him hopefully to Carlton they give they give us some length well when you go inside you're gonna get to the free throw line and and you got it you know which is a good thing 
I, you know, we, we got to the free throw line 27 times. Obviously, UMKC was very aggressive, and that was part of our game plan, plan to be very physical with us. Uh, so we got to the line, and it was great uh, that, uh, you know, he was able to step up. I know he's been frustrated. Uh, it's something I've sat with him and worked on, uh, you know, and, and I think he had to go – a lot of times you got to go out and do it, experience it. Probably fail to, uh, you know, figure out what you need to do. And, you know, he, he hadn't played college basketball in a year. And, and even the year before, who knows, you know, he didn't probably get to the line very much. So this, it's all new to him. And uh, I said the other day, um, one of the things, he's really like a freshman. They're all, he's going to be a sophomore next year. So, uh, you know, to have that experience, and, and he made big crucial free throws. It's a seven, nine point game. I think he makes four out of five or five out of six in that stretch. And if he doesn't make them, who knows what happens with that game. And have you seen maybe some of the rust come off now with him? Like you said, he hadn't played. Do you feel like he looks more comfortable just three games in? Yeah, I, I, I'm sure he does. And, and you know, just feels – understanding what's going, know what's going on. Um, you know, he's done a really good job defensively uh, getting in the ball screens. It's, it was one of the things we're worried about. Uh, they got us on a little slip. Um later in the second half out of a timeout. But uh, for the most part, you know, him and Davion have been very aggressive. Uh, it's going to be a key Saturday just, uh, you know, because they slip ball screens and they, they set some ball screens. So being active and being at that line and being ready to hedge, it was one thing we, you know, I always said, McCall Maween was one of the best ball screen defenders in the country. And, uh, you know, it, you know, that's something – you don't, as a coach, I don't take for granted that in transition defense, safety, things that fans don't really, they get mad, oh, how'd they get a layup? But, you know, that's, that's, those are things that we have to gain. When Casey talked about figuring out roles, making sure we have a safety, making sure that uh, we're not giving that easy layup, making sure we're doing those, uh, you know, getting into the ball screen coverage because, uh, you know, it's for a lot of it, it's probably 80% of defense now in college basketball, how you can deal with transition and how you can deal with uh, ball screen defense. Thanks. Uh, next question to Grant Flanders. Hey, Coach, I just have a few. Um, first, I just want to ask about Monty and Antonio and talk about how they've progressed. I know Monty, obviously, started a bunch of games last year and this year has lost his spot to Antonio. Well, I, I you know, I, I, I like that they both really taken a step up and both of them missed um, a lot of the summer, um, uh, you know, with different uh, situations. And um, I, I didn't know it was, as I said to you guys a while ago, it was the one position I thought, ah, we feel pretty good about it. We got two guys that played a lot as freshmen, had some nice moments, had experience. And then going into practice, since they hadn't practiced, um, you know, it was it was tough. And, and I think it's taken them a little time. Uh, I love Antonio's uh, energy. Uh, I know he didn't score the most points, didn't have the most assists. Uh, most rebounds, but he led us on to play hard and he led us on to plus minus. Um, and, you know, that, that, that role, when you figure out a role, that's really, really valuable to have somebody step up and do that. I think Monty's done better. Um, you know, I, I, the one thing we felt last year with Monty, he was so dependable and he didn't always do the, you know, the special things, but he did the little things and that's why he played and helped us. And his, his plus minus was always pretty, you know, pretty good, pretty positive. Um, I, and then, you know, I, I think maybe just not having the practice time, not having the reps, he was a little behind, uh, maybe a little motivation now because Tony's, you know, picked it up. Uh, but, you know, I'd love for them both to play, you know, if we get 22 minutes from one and 18 from the other and we get, you add up their points and their double digits and, there's six, eight rebounds between them and play hard. And, uh, you know, though that, it would be, it would be beautiful for our team. Um, so, you know, and again, that's, 
you know, they, I thought we played Antonio a few too many minutes uh, against Colorado. I think he had a good mix with 25 and get Monty somewhere 18, 20, playing a little small ball maybe. Um, I think if we can do that and they give, give us great energy and, and uh, find a way to, you know, get a couple hoops here and there, uh, you know, it would, it, would, it would solidify that role at that power forward for us. Uh, one more thing on that. Are you impressed with how Antonio has played this year? Um, I, going into it, I can't, I, I'd be, you know, remiss to, if I said that I expected him to start. So how has he really looked to you? Um, and has he really earned this spot? Well, you know, I, I, again, he missed a lot. And, and you know, you, he missed basically the whole summer and part of the fall and just started getting getting everything together and, and uh, getting healthy and, and giving himself a chance. And, uh, you know, he, uh, the thing I really like, you know, both of them have been in watching film. Uh, both of them have started to come in and shoot a little extra. Monty was in here and out, you know, like an hour before practice on Sunday. And, you know, th those are the little things that they're starting to figure it out. Uh, I think Tone will tell you, he told our <laughs> – all the new guys, one of our early Zooms, uh, he said, guys, I, freshman year, I didn't understand what it was about and how hard it was and, and how, how focused you have to be. And, you know, I, I, and, and, you know for him to say that, it was, it was uh, impressive and showed some maturity. And, and now uh, he's starting to, you know, show that on a consistent basis. And I, and I slowly but surely we get Monty to join that and, you know, like I said, I, I, you know, it would be really nice to have them both give us consistent play every game and we can have some versatility with both of them. And maybe it's just as simple as you need, um, you know, games where you can get a bigger lead. But what does Davion right now need to do better to get on the floor for, you know, more than 10 minutes? I think right now it's just his, I, I mentioned, confidence. Uh, I mentioned balance, strength. He's a lot stronger. Uh, he's lost weight, a lot of those things. Um, uh, defense is always a factor as a freshman, uh, especially with him, ball screen defense, getting out there. It's hard. You know, he, we watched one clip with him the other day. You know, he had to run out and guard a ball screen three times on one possession. And that's hard for big guys, and especially guys that have never done it. He, you know, he'd rather just sit back in the lane, but you, you can't do that. You know, people are going to take advantage of it. So, um, you know, I think those are the things that'll, that'll come with time. Uh, and then just learning, learning all the plays and that, but he, he great, unbelievable young man, big, big heart, uh, good personality, great teammate. And uh, can't be, you know, I'm so impressed by him uh, where he's at and, you know, life has not been easy for him. And, uh, you know, so we just, we think he really has a bright future. And the last thing I have for you is Nigel Pack has seemed, you know, so good on the offensive end. Um, and as a freshman, he just seems really, really inept at, uh, you know, moving without the ball. So how has that come along, you know, his ability to move without the ball? And is that something you kind of hope that is infectious for the rest of the team, you know, to keep the team moving on offense? Yeah, there's no doubt. Um, you know, it, it's funny because he said, uh, Coach Lowry the other day, I never thought I'd be good off the ball because, you know, like a lot of young players, they, even with EYBL with a really good team with guys that are gone to, I don't know, he had at least four or five guys that went to high level teams. He had the ball all the time. And, and now, you know, we want him with the ball at times. And I think he's got to get better at ball screens and in, in, in physical parts of the game. Um, but he's he's really been exceptional off the ball, and uh, the, the we kind of saw it. I, I mean, I saw it. I think he had great footwork, fundamentals, coming off screens, being able to make the play. Um, again, he this is this is all new, and he's uh, he he came in and watched the whole game uh, with you know the other day with the coaches, and and again that's that shows a lot of maturity for a, for a freshman, and it's probably the best thing about him is you know, what he's about as a person and his maturity and understanding of the game. Thank you very much, Coach. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Coach before we let him go? Uh, one for uh, Brian Block. Hey, uh, 
Bruce, I was just wondering, uh, with this being the second year for Coach Otzelberger there, I, I know when you faced them last year, I'm sure a lot of things they were just kind of getting in their concepts and really learning things. And e even though maybe the results don't show it yet, do you see a team that's really mastered a lot more of what he's trying to implement there now in year two? I think he did a great job last year. Uh, unbelievable. If you look back, we beat them in overtime early. They had some heartbreaking losses uh, early. They, he coached the heck out of them, to be honest. And, and, and then, you know, they finally found a way to win at late in the year. And I, I, I could be wrong. I thought they finished in the top few of the tide in the, with some other teams in the Mountain West for like second or third. Uh, but I could be wrong on that. But, I, you know, he's, he's, he's obviously a Wisconsin native. So you always are pulling for, you know, I grew up there and we always feel proud of guys that came up through the, our coaching world there. Uh, you know, he's worked his way up, obviously did a great job at, uh, South Dakota State and and getting them in the tournament and uh, you know he he's 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 got a good staff coach Kruger's son uh, Tim Buckley longtime guy that we've all known been been with some really good people uh, and 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 he coached the heck out of them and you know I think it's uh, like we've all dealt with right now uh, trying to you know it was hard to recruit in the spring. Uh, it, it was hard to coach in the summer and then the fall and you're just doing your best you can. And uh, he coaches them and they execute what he wants. Uh, and it, I think as he gets more and more of his guys in the system, uh, there's no doubt in my mind, he's going to be, he's going to be a successful coach. Uh, next question for uh, Willie Ramirez from the AP. Coach, if we can pick you back off that just for a moment. Um, in terms of playing a team like UNLV, like you said, that, that, that has talent, they're still trying to find that chemistry. Can it be just as dangerous to play a team that hasn't won yet, that's scrappy like that, young coach, but still pulling it together, just as dangerous and facing a Power 5 team that you know everything about when you're facing a winless team that you really don't know anything about because they've yet to – to sort of show their their prowess on either end of the court. Yeah, and, and with us, we're obviously we're a young team too. I I saw one of the graphics the other day that uh, are we went like fourth most underclassmen of Power Five teams or third or something in the country. So we're a young team too. So uh, and we're fighting for our lives. So I I hope our guys. Uh, you can't look at records right now. Uh, you see around the country. Start with them, Montana State. You know, going into their place, winning. See Navy, Eddie DeCellis, a great win at Georgetown. Richmond at Kentucky. I mean, it's just, it's it's happening all. We talked last week about San Francisco losing to UMass Lowell and then beating Virginia. I mean, it's it's COVID basketball. It's it's 2020. Nothing's predictable. Um, and and you know, we we just got to focus on ourselves, coming ready to play. Uh, I think the good. Just like I said, we need experience. They needed experience. They got three games in. Now they get a couple. They get here today. Uh, they get a couple days of rest and preparation. And I'm sure I'm sure he'll have them playing their their butts off uh, against us. And we're gonna have to we're gonna have to play well. And and you know, hopefully we're up to that task. 